Hi guys, my name's Jamin, and today we're going to be talking about the binomial theorem. Now, the binomial theorem actually isn't worth as many marks as you might think. It's only about 6% of your marks on average, but it's about 10% of the marks in question 14. So a lot of the marks are towards the back end of the paper. If you don't have that big question at the end, you're going to have a few smaller questions at the start, perhaps even in multiple choice. But it's always there in some form. The good news is that questions are usually fairly predictable, at least to a point. You can always access these questions by starting with one of a few common manipulation techniques, some of which you'll see today. Then you have the more complex stuff to finish the question off. But you can almost always get at least a couple of marks out of these, even if you're not able to get them all. So there's not really much theory to this topic. You, of course, need to know the binomial expansion, which I've got at the top of the page here. So remember that in general, it's just the binomial coefficient given by your combination. And remember, you can always get that from your calculator. And then it's just powers of A and B, starting with a full A to the N, and then transferring the powers over to your second term until they're all over there for the last term. Nearly all questions are going to require equating these coefficients, so it's really handy to be able to express these coefficients really quickly and really efficiently using the proper notation. Just a quick note, a really good result to remember comes up fairly frequently is this result here. Good thing to have committed to memory. Remember that if you have something of this form, the full version of it using factorial notation is this, and this result comes directly from substituting into that. So a good thing to have in the back of our minds. But that said, let's just get straight into some examples. So we'll start with this question from last year's HSC. It came up in the last question of the exam. So we're asked to consider the expansion of 1 plus x to the n, and we're asked to first show that 2 to the n is equal to that set of binomial coefficients, then a slight variation of it, and then bring that all together at the end. This is a four-mark question, probably around the mid-range of how many you'd be expecting to get for a question, um, but let's get straight into it. So for the first part of the question, you'll just want to write out the expansion of 1 plus x to the n. This is something you should be able to do instinctually, almost from memory. And to get the result they want, it's actually really easy. All we say is to let x equal 1. And on the left, we'll get 2n. And on the right, even with all the different powers of x, they'll all just evaluate to 1. So we've immediately got the result that we want. So that's the first of these super common manipulation techniques I was talking about. Your first check should always be, can I substitute a value to get the result that I want? And in this case, we can. That's a really easy mark to start the problem off. If you can't substitute a number to get the result, the next most common thing is actually to differentiate. And that's actually what we're dealing with here. What you'll notice is that in the question, we have something of the form with an n out the front and an n minus 1 in the power. That's what we get when we differentiate. So that's sort of the clue. What we're going to do is just take the derivative of both sides of this with respect to x. On the left-hand side, we're going to use the chain rule. The power comes out the front, subtract 1 from the power, and we multiply by the inside derivative, but that's just 1, so we'll ignore it. And on the right-hand side, all that's going to happen is the constant is going to disappear, and from there, it's just regular differentiation. These binomial coefficients are just constant numbers. They just sit there as we differentiate. So it'll look like this. It'll look like n1, the x vanishes, because that's just a constant in front of an x. The next one will be 2n2x. So that's the power coming out the front and subtracting 1. The next one will be 3n3 x squared, and so on until we get to the end, and that will be n, 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 x to the n minus 1. And at this point, again, we're just going to substitute x equals 1, and that is what's going to give us the result in the question. So this is another fairly simple one. This is also only worth a mark, and it's a very typical manipulation technique to be differentiating and then substituting. 
So make sure you're aware that this is something that you can do because it comes in handy a lot. Now this third problem is less obvious in what it needs. Obviously the previous results are going to tie back in in some way, but where to start is a little bit of a mystery. And when you're stuck, the best bet is always to expand things, to write things out the long way. It gives you a better picture of what's happening. So the first step that I'm going to do is write this sum out properly. So we're taking the sum from r equals 1 to n of nr to r minus n. And expanding that out, I'll just write the first few terms in full. So we'll get n1 to minus n plus n2 4 minus n plus, and this will be the last one I write, n3 6 minus n. And then the last term will just be nn 2n minus n. Now what we see here is that we have things in two pairs essentially. So we've got the constant numbers times the coefficients and then we have the n's times the coefficients, right? So let's do one of them at a time. The ones in red, let's write them out first. We have two lots of n1 plus four lots of n2 plus six lots of n3 plus 2n lots of nn. And then the back half is minus n lots of just the sum of all these coefficients. Yeah, because it's always minus n lots of n1, minus n lots of n2, and so on. So that's sort of the expanded form. Now this should be something that looks familiar, because in the first few problems of this set, we saw expressions that looked just like these. So for this first one, that's actually double the expression we found in the second part of the question. So if I rewrite that as two outside of this series here, like this, this actually matches perfectly with the second part of this question, right? So I can sub that in. The second bit is minus n times, now this bit in blue is exactly what we found in part a, except it doesn't have the n0 that we had in the first part of the question. So I can write this as minus n, and I'll add the n0 like that, and then I'll just subtract it at the end. just to compensate. So this bit in red I can replace with the expression from the second part of the question and this bit in blue I can replace with the expression from the first part of the question. So that means I've got 2 times n times 2 to the n minus 1 minus n times 2 to the n minus, now n0, that's just 1, right? So I've got that. And if you tidy that up, this first term, 2 times n times 2 to the n minus 1, this and this, these two pieces combine, and you just get n times 2 to the n minus n times 2 to the n plus n, and that's the result proven. So this is an example, or this is what you've got thrown in last year's HSC. It's not as hard as they come, but it's definitely one that takes a little bit of thought. Remember, if you're at all stuck on a binomial question, your best bet is to expand anything that needs to be expanded and just look for parallels. These coefficients are like huge flags that tell you where the matchings will sit. So use them to guide you. Now they can, of course, get more difficult than that. And for this, we're going to look at a question from the 2013 HSE exam. So this is a multi-part question that, in my opinion, is a fair bit harder than what we've just tackled. So let's see how we might step through this one. 
The first question is just to write down the coefficient of x to the 2n in a given binomial expansion. This is something you should just be able to do really easily. It's immediately just 4n 2n. And to get that, the power of x is what goes on the bottom, and what's on the outside of the expansion goes on the top. That's always how it works, as long as your first coefficient is 1. So it's a really easy start to the question, and you've got one free mark before the hard stuff starts. The next question is a little bit trickier, but it actually doesn't take that much working if you know what you're doing. So what we're going to be looking for in this problem is this power of x, and then this power of x plus 2. That x plus 2 isn't something we've seen in this problem yet, so that's sort of like what we're going to be aiming to find. If you look for these cues in the question itself, it can sort of guide your algebra, and you'll see how that works here. So we'll start with the left-hand side, 1 plus x squared plus 2x to the power of 2n. Now, we look at the expression we're asked to find, and it's an expansion. It's a series or sum of binomial coefficients where we're expanding to the 2n. So what we, we can sort of see that this is going to play into it somehow. Now what we want to do is get that x plus 2 in, and if we're clever we can say, okay, I'll pull out an x just from that latter two terms. Now this is something that we can expand using the binomial expansion. And if we write this using the sigma notation, what we're going to get is really close to what we have over there. It's from k equals 0 to 2n, 2nk of all of this, x, x plus 2, because that's the second term, to the power of 2n minus k. That's how we write the binomial expansion in a sigma notation. And all we do to match the result is just expand that second bracket or expand it so the power sits on each piece individually. So it'll look like this. So the x gets a power of 2n minus k, and so does the x plus 2. So this isn't anything hugely difficult, it's just noticing this piece here. Noticing to pull out the x to get that x plus 2. Once you've done that, it's just about knowing how we write the binomial expansion in sigma notation. Remember that in sigma, you can always express 1 plus a to the n as a sum of k equals 0 to n of n k a to the n minus k. There's an invisible 1 to the k in there, but of course 1 to anything is just 1, so we ignore it. That's where this expression comes from, and being able to write something in sigma notation like this is something that you'll find useful, so be sure you know how to do that. Now this next bit is where it gets really nasty. This thing here, this hugely long result, that was given to us, so that's the result we were given and told not to prove it. What we actually want to prove is this bit here. Now our job is to sort of figure out where we need to go, because we're given absolutely no direction whatsoever. And we try and think back to what we've done in previous working to guide our future working. This is what we found in part one. And so what this is, is it's the coefficient of x to the 2n in the expansion of 1 plus x to the 4n. So what this implies is that we're equating coefficients. We need to now find the coefficient of x to the 2n in some other equivalent expansion. And what we notice is that in that thing we were given in the previous working, 1 plus x squared plus 2x to the 2n, notice that 1 plus x squared plus 2x is 1 plus x squared in itself. So, the expansion of this is actually equivalent to 1 plus x to the 4n. And that's what we investigated in the previous part of the question. So essentially what the question is asking us to do is to equate coefficients in the expansion of 1 plus x to the 4n 
and 1 plus x squared plus 2x to the 2n, which we had a sequence for in the previous question. So let's get to equating. So on the left-hand side of this result we need to prove is the coefficient of x to the 2n for 1 plus x to the 4n. So that's this piece here. On the right, we need to extract the coefficients of x to the 2n from the result we used previously, which is here. The problem is that we'll have different pieces of our coefficient of x to the 2n based on the value of k. So to find them all, which we'll eventually add together, let's just step through a few values of k. So let's start with the simplest case, and that would just be k equals 0. So what we're doing right here is we're taking the first term of this sum when k equals 0. We're taking the first term. And so when k equals 0, that term is 2n0, x to the 2n minus 0, then x plus 2 to the 2n minus 0. And what we're after is the coefficient of x to the 2n in this expression here. So this in itself is going to be quite a few terms, right? We have an x plus 2 to the 2n here. That's going to be 2n terms just there. And all of those are multiplied by these. So that's a fairly complicated expansion. Thankfully, that's where the result they've given us comes in. Notice at the top here that this is x to the 2n minus k times x plus 2 to the 2n minus k. That's exactly the form of what we've got in the back half of this expression, this bit I've circled here in yellow. So we don't have to do too much thinking about this. To find the coefficient of x to the 2n, just label it like this, the coefficient of x to the 2n in this piece will just be 2n0 outside of, and then we just have to pick the right term in the result we're given. And when k equals 0, this right here in the top, right there, that's where x to the 2n will be. Because if k is 0, that's where the power of x to the 2n is. So what we attach to it is just what's in front of that. So we'll get a 2n minus k, in this case 0, 0 and then a 2 to the power of 2n minus 0. So that's the first piece of the coefficient. Now let's go to the next term, given by k equals 1. So remember, this is the second term in this expansion, or this sum right here. So that will give us 2n1, x to the 2n minus 1, x plus 2, to the 2n minus 1. The coefficient here is much the same. It'll still have this term out the front, the 2n1, and the rest of it we just have to pick the right term in our result. Now when k is equal to 1, the power of x to the 2n, we see that here. Because think, if k is equal to 1 there, then the plus 1 and the negative 1, they cancel. So you just have x to the 2n. So this piece is now what we attach. So we'll have a 2n minus 1, 1, and then a 2 to the power of 2n minus k, which is 1, minus 1, which gives us 2n minus 2. And we can do the same thing for the next term, k equals 2. That'll give us, from the sigma, 2n2, x to the 2n minus 2, x plus 2 to the 2n minus 2. And the coefficient of x to the 2n there, again, we start with what's at the front, the 2n2. And again, we go back to the result and look for what we need. What we need is actually not shown in our result, but the pattern will continue. It'll again be 2n minus k, k. And this one will be 2 to the 2n 
minus 4. And if you follow the pattern that's being produced at the top in our result, that is what you'll come up with. You can also consider it manually just by thinking about the terms that you get if you were to do this expansion, this binomial expansion there. If you think about it, this is what you will get. But this is the pattern we've set up. Now we've done it for k equals 0, 1, and 2, but of course you would do it all the way up to k is equal to 2n. That's the last term in this sigma. So now to get our final answer, what we're going to do is add these together. So I've written out what we found on the previous slide. That's the term for k equals 0. This is the term for k equals 1. And this is the term for k equals 2. They're the first three pieces. Now remember, we're adding all of these together. We, this is a sum, right? Each of these values of k corresponds to one piece of our coefficient. We're adding them together all the way up to all the way up to 2n, 2n, 2n minus 2n, 2n, 2 to the power of 2n minus 2n. That's what happens if you keep the pattern going up to k is equal to 2n. So now we have everything we need and we're just after the actual result now. So by equating coefficients of x to the 2n, for 1 plus x to the 4n, remember that's what we did in the very first part of this question, and now what we've just figured out for 1 plus x squared plus 2x to the 2n, we get exactly the result we want. The coefficient of x to the 2n for 1 plus x to the 4n is 4n, 2n. And for the 1 plus x squared plus 2x, all to the 2n, that's given by the sum of all of these terms that we've just found. From k equals 0, k equals 1, k equals 2, all the way up to k equals 2n. And the succinct way to write that is, again, with sigma notation. And it's going to match exactly what they've given us in the question. So if you go from k equals 0 to n, and you write these out, it does match the pattern given in the question, just written in a slightly different order. So that's the proof. It's probably one of the hardest binomial questions they've asked in quite a while. Definitely very algebraically intensive. So really important to always be careful with your signs, with your powers, make sure you don't make any silly mistakes that could throw everything off. And above all, just keep in mind what you're doing at all times. Always keep in mind what you could be comparing to get your answer out. It's just about taking small steps and seeing where you can bring in the results you've already used. A few last minute tips for binomial theorem questions. This is definitely one to leave till last if you don't spot the method straight away. So that question that we went through from 2013, that's absolutely one to leave till last. It wasn't the last question in the exam itself. So it's vital that you keep your time constraint in mind and leave questions until last if you don't think that they're going to be proper use of your time. Almost always, you're better off doing other questions and getting easier marks elsewhere rather than stewing for 15 minutes without writing anything. It's just not smart use of time. Really common that you'll make a sign error in a question like this, so do be careful and watch for sign errors. You'd hate to get to the end of a problem and realise that you're just a little bit off because of a sign error you made 10 lines ago. Of course, it's easy to fix, but it just makes things frantic and messy. Just be really extra careful as you move. And keep in mind, you'll almost always be equating coefficients. We did it in that last example. It's a really common thing to do. Use the answer as a clue for which coefficient to take, like in our problem. We saw 4n, 2n, and that was the clue to take coefficients of x to the 2n right? So it's always about reading your question and using that to sort of guide you on what you should be doing. The best way to prepare though is of course practice. Make sure you guys are doing lots of practice papers, lots of practice binomial theorem questions. And once again, if you have any queries whatsoever about anything in this video or beyond, 
be sure to jump onto the three unit math forums and I'll be happy to lend a hand. There'll be a link right after the video is finished to access that forum.